So the NHL is talking about expanding once again, and they've asked me, stick on the ice to create a new team for them. And that's exactly what I've done, so meet the New Mexico Outlaws. However, there's one thing that the NHL didn't tell me, and it's that there's going to be no expansion draft, but instead, I have to go ahead and sign as many free agents as possible to build our team. So clearly, we're not going to have a great team, but I'm going to rebuild this team here, and we're going to win some Stanley Cups. So this is going to be a three-part series where each part's going to consist of five seasons. For video number one, we're going to focus strictly on rebuilding building the New Mexico Outlaws. This team looks terrible right now, like our best player is Phil Kessel at an 80 overall. Video number two will consist of us continuing to rebuild the New Mexico Outlaws, but we're definitely going to be a better team in competing for Stanley Cups. And in the final video, we're going to be doing the final five seasons of the rebuild. That's when this team's going to be at their peak, and they're going to be competing for Stanley Cups and trying to certify themselves as a dynasty. On top of that, there are some restrictions when it comes to free agency, as I'm only allowed to make three signings per year, but I'm only allowed to sign players under 85 overall. So a majority of the rebuild is going to be coming from drafting and completing trades. And personally, I think that's the most enjoyable way to do it. And then our final rule is going to be I'm allowed to play one game in each playoff series, but the second I lose a game, I can no longer play any. So if I play a game in the first round and lose, then I can't play any games in the second round, conference finals, or Stanley Cup. Now that we know all the rules here, let's go ahead and simulate through season number one. Now we're only a couple weeks into the season here, but we've been offered a very interesting deal here. Two second round picks for Sean Couturier. Now normally I wouldn't make a deal like this, but Sean Couturier could be a very interesting piece for the team. 86 overall, he's got some X factors, 30 years old. You know what? I don't really think he necessarily fits the timeline here, so I think I'm going to be saying no to this deal. But Sean Couturier definitely could be an interesting piece for our team. We can make him the captain. He could lead the way for the next five seasons, but I just feel like he's going to be declining pretty quick here. And for some some reason our team's exceeding expectations were 6-5-1, and one, so let's not get ahead of ourselves. So we've reached the trade deadline. I think it's safe to say the New Mexico Outlaws are definitely exceeding expectations right now. We're not dead last in the entire league here, 24-31-8. We have to remember, we're comprised of strictly free agents right now, so everyone on our team other than Phil Kessel is below an AD overall, but yet somehow we're still not worse than the entire league. We're going to ignore this team right here. The simulation's just screwing them. Yeah, that's a tough luck, I'm not going to lie. So obviously, since we don't have a ton of superstars we're not going to see any ridiculous scoring but Phil the Thrill Kessel you might as well call him a superstar 53 points here 20 goals 33 helpers you're definitely going to have some trade value and we're going to be shipping you out here meanwhile when it comes to goaltending John Gillies bro you are locked in a 940 and a 219 what is going on so when it comes to rebuilding the New Mexico Outlaws we need to pick up a lot of young talent and I think Seth Jarvis from the Carolina Hurricanes could be a nice addition to the team here he's only 22 years old and he's already an 84 for overall he's got top six potential i think we'll sign him to a pretty good extension once we make this deal so phil kessel in a fourth rounder i'm sending you over to carolina for seth jarvis Unfortunately, Carolina's saying no to that deal, so I'll throw in a sixth rounder and hopefully that'll be enough to get this deal done. It's going to be enough, and we just picked up a nice piece for our core here. Now, I don't necessarily want to give up a lot of draft compensation when it comes to these deals right here, but picking up a guy like Christian Cairo could be pretty good for our team. He's a young player, 20 years old, and he's already a 75 overall. Through making a trade like this, we already know what we're going to get, and I highly doubt with a third round pick we're going to get something better than Christian Cairo, so I'm going to make this deal with the Dallas Stars here. Well, I'm going to try to make a deal with the Dallas Stars. Similar to our last trade, I think a sixth round pick can be the difference maker here. So I'm sending this over to the Dallas Stars and they're going to be saying yes to that deal. So we just picked up Christian Cairo. Now I think this is going to be our last deal here. Josh Bailey over to the Washington Capitals for Sonny Milano. Now Sonny Milano is definitely not the youngest player in the world and he's probably not going to be here for the long run. But you know what? An 82 overall at 1.9 million. I'll take that deal. And through completing those three moves, I think we're going to call it here and let's simulate to the end of the season and then ideally get the first overall pick because we're in desperate need of that. Now we have to consider where this team is right now when it comes to this waiver claim we're not that great of a team in Hayek he's a 78 overall he'd probably be our best defenseman so I think we should make that move it will also give Christian Cairo someone to play with now Seth Jarvis I think you're going to be a very important piece to the team you're going to be playing a lot of top six minutes so if we can lock you down to an eight-year deal at 4.4 I think that's going to age very well for us meanwhile when it comes to Hayek we really don't have any better defensemen than him so four years at 1.3 million why not with the season wrapping up here I couldn't tell you how we did this good 25th in the entire league, 36, 37, and 9. I was expecting us to be dead last in the entire league and by a wide margin, but here we are. Who would have thought? Now, when it comes to the scoring leaders, I'm not really overly surprised that Seth Jarvis led the way here, but the question I do have is what did he do since coming over to the team? 10 goals and 7 assists, 17 points in 19 games. That's some not bad production from him. Similar to Seth Jarvis, I'm curious to see what Sonny Milano did. He was playing some first line minutes for us, 17 points in 19 games. I think that was a great pickup for us. Meanwhile, 
when it comes to goaltending, neither of these goalies actually played that bad. Halak had a 914, while Gillies had a 920. We're going to ignore the goals against here because we basically did have no defense. So a 914 to 920 with no defense, those are actually pretty good numbers. Of course, we do know we're not going to be making the playoffs here because our team does suck. But the Toronto Maple Leafs, you're finally going to be hoisting the Stanley Cup here. You're taking down the Dallas Stars in a sweep. But this is where things get interesting. What's the draft lottery going to be telling us? Are we going to be jumping to number one? Because that would be ideal. It doesn't look like it. We're going to be getting the 10th overall pick. We're dropping from 9 to 10. Meanwhile, Winnipeg's jumping from 11 to 1. Yeah, you hate to see it. You really do. So with the 10th overall pick, I decided to go with Kivi Haru, and the reason I went with him over a couple other players available, every single video I do, this man turns into an absolute beast, so I'm hoping that happens for us today. But it turns out that Kivi Haru is actually not going to be our best selection here, because in the 5th round, we're going to be securing a low lead potential 2-way forward. So we've officially reached free agency, and now it's time to make 3 moves, and the first one's going to be Max Domi to a 4-year deal at $3.5 million. Actually, we'll make that 3.6 because I really want him to join the team. And if you're wondering why I'm offering more than the asking price we're one of the worst teams in the entire league we're gonna have to pay to get these guys so our next move is gonna be bringing in shellington to a two-year deal at four million dollars clearly our defense needs a lot of help and i think he's gonna provide some help for us and to finish it all off, we're going to be doing more of a high risk, high reward deal here. It's going to be five years for Daniel Sprong at $4 million. We're going to give him a ton of first line minutes. Hopefully his overall develops into like an 86, 87 overall. And then by the time we trade him, he's going to have a ton of trade value. So those are going to be the three signings we're going with. I'll make a couple moves to the coaching staff and sign a couple scouts. And then we'll get ready for next season. Well, the high risk, high reward move and Daniel Sprong is actually not working out for us because he's not going to be signing with the team. Yeah, that's tough. That's real tough. Similar to the Daniel Sprong deal, Max Domi's also not going to be signed to the team, so the only guy we got was Shillington. It's time for us to go back into free agency and pick up some scraps. Since we were unable to get Max Domi and Sprong, I guess we're going to have to sell with Victor Olsen to a three-year deal at $3.2 So the plan with Blake Wheeler is I'm going to sign him to a one-year deal here. He's going to play on the first line along Seth Jarvis and Sonny Milano, and then at the trade deadline, we'll flip him at 50% retain and get a couple players for him, maybe even some draft compensation. Now, the team's definitely seen improvements here. Sonny Milano, Blake Wheeler, Victor Olsen, and the reason and Victor Olsen's on the first line over Seth Jarvis is Olsen has the perfect line fit so I want him getting a ton of minutes. Defensively we have a decent defense here the only issue is none of these guys have good line fits so that's really what's holding us back. Eventually we'll bring in a new coach that fits with the defense a bit better and then Christian Cairo and Shillington they'll have better fits here. And then to finish it all off of course we got Yaroslav Halak still in between the pipes for us and we're also gonna have John Gillies here. Both of these goaltenders played fantastic last season, so we'll bring them back for another year, and then maybe over the offseason, we'll actually sign a goaltender for the future. Now, it really shouldn't be a surprise we're one of the worst teams in the league here. Actually, we are the worst. 33rd here with a 21, 36, and 6 record. But there is one thing that's very surprising. It's our leading scorer. Because what world are we living in when 40-year-old Eric Stahl is picking up 23 goals and 30 helpers for 53 points? Out of all the players on our team, Eric Stahl is leading the way. Ain't no way. But I guess the one positive with Eric Stahl having a great season like this, he has some trade value alongside Blake Wheeler, so we're going to make some moves here. So we already knew I was going to be trading Blake Wheeler at 50% retained, but the question was, which team was he going to be sent to? And I think it's going to be the Nashville Predators, as we're going to try to pick up Tomasino here. But it shouldn't be much of a surprise, it's going to take more than Blake Wheeler, so I threw a fifth round pick in the deal, and we're getting this done. Well, I thought we would have got this done, but who knows, maybe a seventh round pick can be the difference maker here, and it looks like it will be, and we're getting this deal done, and we picked up another nice young prospect. Actually, I don't know why I called him a prospect, he's probably like 21, 22 at this point, and he's already been playing in the NHL a couple years. Just ignore what I said. So after making that move to pick up Thomas Sino, I think Hoglander would also be a nice young piece to the team. He's 24 years old, already an 82 overall, he's got top 6 potential, and all we're going to be really losing is Eric Stahl here. He's 40 years old, I'm perfectly fine with making this deal. I'm going to be honest, I have no clue why I'm attempting the deals I am. Like, why did I think Eric Stahl would be enough for Hoglander? One for one. Eric Stahl in a seventh, though? That's going to be happening. Now, although we had a worse record this season, I don't think anyone would disagree that we were definitely a better team. We're going to be finishing 31st in the entire league, 30, 44, and 8. Columbus and San Jose, y'all should be ashamed of yourselves. Seth Jarvis is going to be having himself another great year. He's picking up 60 points, 17 goals, 43 assists. Victor Olsen, 55 points. Can't complain with that. And Simon Milano, 51 as well. Everyone's having good seasons here. The real question is, Tomasino, what did you do since we acquired you? What are your numbers looking like? 12 points in 19 games, not too bad. And Hoglander, what are your numbers looking like? 9 points in 19 games. I'm expecting a bit more from you, but hey, the numbers could be worse. Meanwhile, the goaltending numbers this season, definitely not nearly as good. Halak, a 906, and Gilly, 
Cowboys in 882. Last season, y'all were on something different. This season, however, reality set in. But you know what's definitely not a reality? The Edmonton Oilers winning the Stanley Cup in a sweep over the Buffalo Sabres. I'm sorry, Oilers fans, but y'all are way too dependent on Connor McDavid. When Connor McDavid wasn't playing good, you were one of the worst teams in the entire league. Now that he's playing good, y'all are on a winning streak. If this man ever got hurt and missed 25 games, y'all are cooked. You're getting the first overall pick. So now that we know nothing extraordinary is happening with the team, let's go ahead and simulate to the draft lottery and then hopefully get the first overall pick this time around and not get screwed here. We're dropping from three to five. So with the fifth overall pick, we can either select Roger McQueen or Jordan Gavin. Honestly, I don't think it really matters which of these two guys we select. So we're going to go with Roger McQueen, seen as he is projected fifth overall. So Hollander is still pretty young, and for the duration of this contract, he's going to continue to get better. Five years at 4.2 million. I think that's going to age well for us. So this deal is a bit expensive for what we're actually going to begin. Ryan Lindgren, 84 overall, five years at $6 million. But defensive defensemen are very hard to come by. And Ryan Lindgren, he's a great one, so we better bring him to the team so this is the second video in a row where sam bennett for some reason his asking price is incredibly low so we're going to do four years at 3.2 million i don't know what's going on but sam bennett 3.2 million i'll take it and then for our final move we'll bring in a defenseman for the next three years at two million dollars that's not a bad price for a 27 year old who's an 80 overall on top of making these free agent signings we gotta give out some contract extensions here and tomasino five years at 1.7 million i'll definitely take that or do we go eight years here at like two million dollars Actually, I like that contract a bit better. We're doing eight years at two million. And Sonny Milano, I can't believe you'd be willing to accept this deal because you're up to an 85 overall. Your development's been fantastic for us. Four years at 4.5 million. That's an absolute steal. And you know who else is going to be a steal for us? Christian Cairo. We're doing eight years at 1.5 million, a high risk, high reward deal. You're only 21 years old, but you're up to a 79 overall. You're going to have a good defensive partner this season. The sky's the limit for you. And with a contract like this, that's going to work fantastic with the team. Now, Victor Olofsson, you were fantastic for us last season an 85 overall you had some decent numbers here 55 points in 82 games you're minus 23 but i'm not going to worry too much about that since we acquired you your trade value has gone up quite a bit and you still have two years left on your deal now the question is Am I willing to retain 50% of Victor Olsen's money to send him over to the Buffalo Sabres so we can pick up Devin Levi? We would be retaining about 1.6 million for the next two years, but we do get an 85 overall goaltender that has medium elite potential. He's got some X factors already. This could be the right move for us. Unless a guy like Kiefer Bellows can somehow make the difference and we could get a deal done like this. I highly doubt it, but you know what I'm going to try? That's an absolute steal for us. We didn't have to retain any money on Victor Olofsson, and now we have our goaltender for the future. Now, I said I'm only allowed to make three free agent signings per season, and that rule is not going to be changing. However, we don't have enough forwards under contract here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to simulate the rest of free agency, and then right at the end of free agency, the CPU is going to sign three more forwards for me, and whatever they give me, that's what I'm going to have to work with. So as we can see, the team's been taking some massive upgrades here. Roger McQueen, Sonny Milano, and Seth Jarvis are going to be on the first line. On the second, we're going to see Josh Archibald, Tomasino and Hoglander and then on that third line we also have Sam Bennett here ideally I would play him on the second line here but then they lose that plus two overall boost and I don't really want the team to be losing that so defensively this is what we're going with Kivi Haru and Jordan Cairo are gonna be our top pairing here I understand Kivi Haru is only a 76 overall and playing him on the top pairing probably isn't the smartest decision in the world but they are getting a plus three overall boost for line chemistry so I think he can hold it down while our other two pairings pretty solid here and then to cap it all off of course we picked up Devin Levi over the offseason and he's up to an 87 overall he's definitely the future goaltender for this team okay i'm going to be completely honest i did not think it was actually possible for us to be this bad this season 17 37 and 10 i thought we were headed in the right direction i mean we clearly are we've been developing a lot of great young prospects here we just have to give them a bit more time to develop but only 17 wins at the 64 game mark yeah it's not ideal also we don't play defense here so that doesn't help i mean to be fair am i really surprised that we're not doing that great seth jarvis 56 points 26 goals 30 helpers good season from him Sonny Milano I can't complain about this production Roger McQueen you're looking absolutely elite right now we just got to make some moves to improve the team for next season the young core looks great I don't really want to change that up but you know what we could trade a guy like Josh Archibald away he's definitely not going to be here next season he's 33 years old but he's got 43 points he should have some trade value also we're not looking at Devin Levi's numbers I already know those are cooked so when it comes to making moves here, this is the first one we're doing. Shillington over to the Edmonton Oilers. And we're going to be picking up Dylan Holloway and Broberg. But of course, we're not going to be able to get this done without the lucrative seventh round pick because we already know that's going to make the difference here. Never mind. It has to be the lucrative sixth round pick. Imagine an NHL deal not going through because a team didn't include a sixth round pick. 
That would be wild. Like, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to accept this deal unless you give me the 170th overall pick. Like, what are we doing? So we're going to be giving up a ton in this deal. A sixth and seventh round pick. We already know how valuable those are. That's going to be packaged up alongside Josh Archibald. And we're going to be picking up Nick Robertson. I know we just gave up a ton there, like a sixth and seventh round pick. Stick on the ice is getting out of hand here. He's lost his mind giving up draft picks of that quality. And it actually turns out that those last two trades we did aren't going to be the final move because Francois got placed on waivers. He might be 35 years old, but he's an 80 overall. Let's bring him to the team. Why not? After picking up Broberg from the Edmonton Oilers, I'm going to be giving him an extension here. Four years at just under 2.4 million. He's going to be a good third pairing defenseman for us. On top of signing Broberg, we're also going to be signing Dylan Holloway to a four-year deal, and that's going to be at 1.6 million. Now I'm going to make a statement right here. Next season, 20th in the entire league. We're going to be a borderline playoff team. This season, on the other hand, we're not going to talk about. 21, 51, and 10. We actually have a good team here. It's just incredibly young. The guys haven't developed yet. Once they start developing, though, it's over for the rest of the league. Like, it's only a matter of time before a guy like Seth Jarvis breaks out. He's an 84 overall at 24 years old. He's consistently putting up great numbers. He's jumping to an 86 at the beginning of next season. Roger McQueen, he's probably going to be up to an 82 overall. Sonny Milano, he's going to jump to an 87. He'll get a couple X factors. Tomasino, he'll go up to an 81. This team's going to start improving here. Jordan Cairo, he'll be up to an 82. I just called him Jordan Cairo. It's Christian Cairo. I caught myself on that one. The team doesn't look great right now. Like, look at the plus minus. Devin Levi, I'm very scared to look at your numbers. That is ugly. That is very ugly, but we're not worried about that. The team's getting better. Trust me on that. Meanwhile, in case you were wondering what happened in the postseason, Florida's going to be winning their first ever Stanley Cup. So shout out to them. Bruh, I wasn't even paying attention. I just realized we dropped from one to three. Ain't no way we were that bad and then proceeded to drop from one to three. And I can guarantee you the guy that's projected number one overall probably has franchise potential. So here we go, jumping into the entry level draft. We're going to simulate the first two picks. And I just want to see if anyone with franchise potential gets drafted here. So with the first overall pick, Medium franchise potential. Who would have saw that one coming? Second overall pick, medium elite potential. I mean, we're going to be left with Gavin McKenna. I'm not going to complain about that, but he's actually projected fourth. We could go with this guy right here. Now, we don't necessarily need a playmaker, but Gavin McKenna, can I really pass up on him? Because that's a great selection. This is going to be a tough pick. You know what? I'm not really going to debate too much here. We're selecting Gavin McKenna and then Tomasino, I'm going to be trading you. And the only reason I'm trading you is because we picked up Gavin McKenna. He's only like two overalls lower than you, but he's like six years younger. It's kind of hard to pass up on Gavin McKenna. I'm just going to keep it a stack. And it looks like Gavin McKenna is not going to be the only elite potential player we're getting because with the 34th overall pick, we're going to be securing a medium elite potential goaltender and he's already a 67 overall. And we're not done there because in the third round, another medium elite potential goaltender. So these two guys are definitely going to be battling out for who's the future goaltender of the team. With our first free agent signer, we're going to be doing a three-year deal with Rajishka. It's going to be a three by three. I think it'll be a nice piece to the bottom six. On top of picking up Rajishka, William Carrier would also be a nice addition to the bottom six, so we'll do two years at 2.1 million. And to finish off our free agent signings, I'm actually perfectly okay with Tyler Johnson, one year at 1.7 million. Now that Gavin McKenna's here, we really don't need Tomasino, but I'm having a very difficult time trading him away because we already know he has a great fit on the second line here. And look at this contract, eight years remaining at $2 million. You can't get a contract any better than that. But then again, Mikey Anderson would be a nice piece to the defense. Kaliev, he could definitely help the bottom six here. I think we got to make this trade. I think this trade will definitely help us out. They're saying no, but we're just a bit low. So you already know what we got to throw in. The most valuable draft pick in the history of the NHL, the lucrative seventh round draft pick. There we go. We got the deal done. That should help our team a lot. So this is going to be potentially a very risky move for us. We're going to trade Dylan Holloway here because he doesn't fit on the bottom six. And we're going to pick up Kyler Yamamoto and we're just gonna pray he fits on the bottom six here i mean there's a very good chance he does but you just never know when making deals like this so let's hope for the best so at one point we tried to sign daniel sprong but he decided to go to the seattle kraken this time you can't say no because we're trading for him nick robertson a mediumly potential goaltender over to the seattle kraken and we got daniel sprong never mind we got to add something else to the deal. In Seattle, I just acquired your fourth round pick in the Yamamoto deal, but now I'll give it back to you in order to get Daniel Sprong. Okay, seriously, what else do you want? Here's a sixth round pick. Of course, the sixth round pick makes the difference. After picking up Kaliev for the LA Kings, we're going to be giving him an extension as well to keep him on the team. We'll do five years at 5.4 million. He's going to be playing some big second line minutes for us, so I think his development's going to be pretty good and that contract will age well. Now, Daniel Sprong, I could probably sign you to a five-year deal at 4.2 million, but I'm not really sure if I want to do that if you're playing third line minutes for us. 
So I'm going to hold off on that extension. But with everything all said and done, this is what the team's looking like. Roger McQueen, Sonny Milano, and Seth Jarvis on the first line. Then we're going to have Kaliav, McKenna, and Hoglander on the second. The bottom six here actually looks really good, including that fourth line. I mean, I think we got a pretty solid team here. We should be able to make the postseason. Defensively, Mikey Anderson and Christian Cairo are going to be leading the way here. And then the next two pairings, those are looking really solid. Kivi Haru, he's going to be playing second pairing minutes this season, but he's getting a plus two overall boost. I think that's actually a better fit for him. While Ryan Lindgren. He actually has a perfect fit on the third pairing, and he's going to be playing that with Philip Roberg. I think this team's going to make some big moves this season. And if you're going to make moves, you need a great goaltender, and that's what we have in Devin Levi. Medium elite potential still. He's an 86 overall. He's got X factors. Are we going to win ourselves the Stanley Cup this season? I doubt it, but we're definitely going to be competing. All right, so before we get to the trade deadline here and trade Daniel Sprong away, you're looking at our record and saying, wow, that's not much of a surprise. You guys suck 27, 33, and 3. What if I told you this record is actually a lot better than what you think? Because this is what we did to start the season. We started the season 1 11 and 1. We won one game in our first 13. After that, we actually weren't playing too bad. 27, 33, and 3. That's actually a pretty good record considering we started 1, 11, and 1. If you were to take out those first 13 games, we went 26, 22, and 2. Not a great record by any means, but definitely a lot better than this. So I think this is probably going to be the lone move we make this season. Daniel Sprong over to the Vancouver Canucks. We're going to pick up Sharoff, an 81 overall 19-year-old. He's a good playmaker. That would fit on the bottom six for us. We're also going to be getting a third round pick in the deal. Well, maybe we won't be getting a third round pick. We might just be going one for one here, but I think this deal is going to work out well for us. Okay, y'all need to hear me out here. Our first round pick for next season over to the Ottawa Senators for Brady Kachuk. He'll have one more year left on his deal after this one. He's an 89 overall power forward. He can play on our first line. I actually really like this deal. I'm willing to do this. I'm not overly surprised they said no, but there is one other guy I'm willing to include in the deal, and that's Sonny Milano. He's already 30 years old. He's probably going to be declining in the next few years. I mean, he shouldn't be declining, but we don't need him on the first line if we're going to have Brady Kachuk. So Brady Kachuk in a second round pick in exchange for our first rounder in Sonny Milano. Can we get this deal done? They're going to be saying no. Give me at least a third rounder or something. I'll take this third rounder from the Colorado Avalanche and the New York Islanders. Can we get this deal done? They're still saying no. Give me Colorado's third at least. You got to give me something here. Never mind. I guess we're just going to do our first rounder in Sonny Milano for Brady Kachuk. That's a massive move right here. They're saying no. But you know why they're saying no? They need that seventh round pick. We actually don't even have a sixth round pick we can give them. So you know what? Here's a fifth rounder. You're getting a steal here. A fifth round pick? That might be the difference maker. If we got Brady Kachuk. That's going to be a massive upgrade for our team. And I think that's the piece we are missing. So I said we would probably be sitting 20th in the entire league and fighting for a playoff spot. Well, that's not exactly what happened. We finished 28th in the entire league, 34, 43, and 5. But you know what? I'm going to blame the poor start for this season. We started 1, 11, and 1. It's pretty hard to come back from that. Brady Kachuk was a pretty solid pickup for us. He's finishing with 76 points. But since we acquired him, 26 points in 19 games, 14 goals, 12 assists. Yeah, we're going to be an elite team next season, that's for sure. And Devin Levi, don't worry. The defense will be better in front of you next season. The entire team is going to be better. Trust me, next season, once everyone's developed, that's going to be a difference maker for this team. Now, I know I said this last season, but I'm going to say it again here. As long as everyone develops, we're going to be competing for a Stanley Cup next season. I believe we have a great core here. We have a ton of young pieces. As long as they all play up to their potential and develop correctly, we'll be great. And something that would also be nice... The first overall pick because we were one of the worst teams in the entire league. What can we get here? It looks like we're dropping to seven. Who would have saw that one coming? Now, one thing that's actually a bit surprising is our best prospect isn't going to be coming with the seventh overall pick, but is coming with the 39th overall as we're selecting a low lead potential sniper. But I'm actually going to have to take that last statement back because this is our best prospect with the 72nd overall pick, a medium elite potential left winger. The great drafting is going to continue here because with 138th overall, we're going to be selecting a low lead potential sniper, but selecting a 69 overall player in the fifth round, that's definitely a great pick. So we didn't really have to make any moves during the re-sign phase, but now it's time to give us some massive extensions. Roger McQueen, eight years at 7.1 million. Your agent should be fired. You should be getting at least 12 million. But we're not quite done with the extensions yet because Kibi Haru, I'm going to give you an eight year deal at 6.2 million. I'm going to bank on you progressing into an 85 overall, 86 overall at some point, And then this is going to be a great contract for us. Also, Kyra Yamamoto, you play your role in the fourth line. So I don't mind paying you 2 million for the next three years. And to finish off all the moves here, Devin Levi, I'm also going to give you an eight year extension, eight years, 7.3 million. I'm locking down the entire core long term here. So of course I can make a couple free agent signs before we head into 
to next season and we're going to start off with Nito Niederreiter to a one-year deal at two million dollars. The next deal is going to be with Philip Hedo here. I'll do two years at 3.4 million. And when it comes to Brady Kachuk, of course, we just trade for him and I'm willing to pay him this amount. Eight years at 10.5 million. This man put up some incredible numbers when he played with us and I'm hoping he can continue with that type of production. And when it comes to our final free agent signing, we have a ton of cap space available here. 33 million to be exact. So Alex Kalorn, I'll do 5.6 million for one year. So here we go with the final season of video number one here. Gavin McKenna, Brady Kachuk, Seth Jarvis on the first line. Players are finally starting to develop and earning their X factors. Seth Jarvis is up to an 87 overall. The second line's also looking fantastic. We got Roger McQueen here, Hoglander, and then Kiliev. Three fantastic players, but the third line and fourth line, those are solid as well. Philip Hedo and Alex Kalorn, they're going to be holding it down on that fourth line alongside Yamamoto. This team can definitely compete with the best in the league. I guess you could say we have one weakness, and that's our defense, because we don't really have a true superstar defenseman. I mean, Christian Cairo, he's still 23 years old. He's fairly young here at 81 overall. Mikey Anderson, he's doing his thing on the top pairing. Kivi Haru, he continues to improve. He's up to an 81 overall as well at 21 years old. There's a lot of good potential with this team. As long as these guys continue to develop, we can be a 60 win team within three years. And to finish it all off, of course, we already know who our goaltender is. That's going to be Devin Levi. I am going to make one trade here though. I want a different backup. So this is what the trade will be to pick up our goaltender. We're going to be picking up Guzda from the Anaheim Ducks. Probably said that name wrong, but it doesn't really matter. He's an 83 overall at 26 years old. That would be good enough for our backup here. So this is what the goaltending tandem is looking like now. If we're not winning 50 games this season, I don't know what's going on. So I think it's time the New Mexico Outlaws become one of the best teams in the entire league. I'm not making this trade right here but I'm willing to make this trade. We're going to be trading next season's first round pick because we're going to be a good team. We're going to try to pick up Brant Clark here. He's an 87 overall. He's already got a superstar X factor. He'll be the best defenseman on our team. And I think that would be the difference maker. I think what we're missing right now is a superstar defenseman. Can we get this deal done like that? I'm not overly surprised, but I'm willing to give up quite a bit to get Brant Clark. So if I add Linden, the prospect we just drafted with the 7th overall pick, is that going to be enough to get this deal done? I'm not surprised the LA Kings are saying no. Now I don't necessarily want to give up more draft picks because we already have basically no draft capital for the next couple years, but I'll throw a third rounder in the deal. Is this enough to get it done? They're saying no, but it's just a bit low. We're bringing Brent Clark onto the team. And of course, in order to get this deal done, a 7th round pick is going to be the difference maker. We just picked up one of the best defensemen in the entire league. He's still on a 3 year deal at $5.8 million. The New Mexico Outlaws are about to win a Stanley Cup. So it's about time the New Mexico Outlaws become one of the best teams in the entire league. We're going to be finishing 7th here with a 49-27-6 record. And honestly, I'm pretty surprised. We were borderline a 50 win team this season, but we only finished 7th. Our offense, it was pretty good. 3.44 goals per game, but our defense was really the difference maker. 3rd in the entire league, 2.77 allowed. The New Mexico Outlaws are here, and this team's going to keep on getting better. Our young prospects are going to continue to develop. This team's going to be number 1 in the entire league next season that's a fact and just look at the scoring on this team brady kachuk he's got 76 points roger mcqueen 75 hoglander he picked up 73 points an incredible season from him gavin mckenna 71 points seth jarvis 69 it doesn't matter who's on the ice we're gonna be picking up goals and on top of the scoring being great the goaltending is even better 41 wins for devin levi eight shots a 917 a 256 i think we should be the favorites for the stanley cup if you ask me and for the first time in franchise history the new mexico outlaws are gonna be in the postseason here and it looks like their first matchup is going to see them taking on the Arizona Coyotes. So for the New Mexico Outlaws things were looking absolutely fantastic for this team taking the first two games of the series. Now we're in game six and we're down 3-2 in the series and we're also down 3-1 in game six here. So I'm going to jump into this one. Hopefully I can spark a comeback. Also, I was positive that I set our away jerseys to the correct team color. Apparently I didn't. So even though our primary colors are red and orange, it looks like we're going to be teal and orange here. But it doesn't really matter what color our jerseys are because we're going to find a way to score goals here and Alex Kalorn is making this a one goal game. Yeah, so I'm not going to lie, this looks kind of cooked here with the jerseys. I was like 99% sure that I did all the jersey colors and everything was all good. Apparently not. We don't even have the logos on the jerseys. Yeah, that's tough. Yeah, so you might have thought that goal would be sparking a comeback for us. Yeah, well, that's not really the case. Logan Cooley's going to be picking the puck away and he's making this a two-goal game once again. Yeah, that's tough. But you know what? Arizona's left too much time on the clock here. And Roger McQueen, he's going to be weaving through the entire defense. He's going to go to the backhand short side. I have no clue how he got this past the goaltender, but he's making this a one-goal game. But unfortunately, it looks like time's just not going to be on our side here. The Arizona Coyotes, they're just too good of a team and they're going to be 
taken us down in the first round. Yeah, so for example, this is what the home jerseys look like. We went with red and orange with black as an extra color here. I mean, these look actually like some pretty decent jerseys. Unfortunately, that didn't translate to the away jerseys. So yeah, this is the only jersey we're going to be rocking from here on out. Unless we're the away team, because then we'll wear the away jersey, but... Yeah, kind of sucks that we're not going to have all the jerseys this color, especially with the logo, because the logo looks clean. So it turns out that the Arizona Coyotes are actually a really good team, as they're going to go on to win the Stanley Cup, taking the New York Islanders down in a seven-game series. So considering we took two games away from the Stanley Cup champions, I guess that's not a bad first postseason for us. Now, we might only have two picks in the upcoming draft here, but one of them's going to be a solid defenseman. He's going to have low leap potential. So there wasn't really any players we need to re-sign, but we do have to go out some extensions here, and McKenna, he's going to be costing us a pretty penny here but of course we have to keep him around eight years at 11 million dollars mckenna might be costing us a lot of money but sharov here he's going to be signing a fantastic contract with the team eight years at 5.9 million and when it comes to sam bennett more than likely we're going to be trading him because he has one year left on his deal at 3.2 million and if we want to sign him to an extension we're going to have to give him 5.5 million plus and i'm not really willing to commit that to a 32 year old but one thing's for certain, this man's going to have a ton of trade value. Another guy I want to bring back is Rajishka. Three years at 3.4 million. He does his job on the third line, and he's actually producing some pretty solid results. And to finish the extensions off, can we do Philip Hedl to a one-year deal at 1.9 million? I'd be okay with that if we can get that deal done. So I should have realized this a long time ago. If the New Mexico Outlaws want to win a Stanley Cup, there's one man we need. When we need big-time goals to be scored, this guy has to be on our team. Andre Burakovsky, he's an 86 overall. He has two years left on his deal at 33 years old. This man's the face of our franchise. We gotta bring him onto the team. The fact that I didn't have him on the team earlier, I'm actually a bit disappointed in myself. So we're gonna make this deal right here. We might have got finesse there, but we just got Andre Burakovsky and he's surely gonna turn this team around. Now we do have a bit of cap space left, so I'm just gonna make some small signings to help our bottom six. So I don't even know where a guy like Vladimir Tarasenko is gonna be playing on our team, but you know what? He definitely can't make us worse and I'm gonna outbid the Carolina Hurricanes 5 million for one season. And on top of bringing Vladimir Tarasenko onto the team, I don't think Taylor Hall can make us any worse either, so I'll bring him here as well. And with those moves completed, it's time to simulate to next season and see what the team's looking like. The New Mexico Outlaws are an incredible team led by Gavin McKenna, Brady Kachuk, Seth Jarvis, and Roger McQueen. On top of those core pieces, we also have a ton of other fantastic players. We have Hollander, Akiliev, and then a great bottom six here led by some old and young players. Defensively, we have a bunch of fantastic pieces here, but Brant Clark and Kivi Haru, they're going to be leading the way. Well, in between the pipes we have the same tandem running it back again this season and Devin Levi he's going to be the guy leading the way for us at an 89 overall with five x factors during last offseason we did pick up a couple guys one of them being Vladimir Tarasenko but he actually doesn't fit on any of the bottom six lines here and he doesn't really have a great fit on any of the lines so we're actually going to have him as a healthy scratch I mean we technically could throw him on the top six here but the guys we have are actually better than him so there's no point wasting any time here. We already know what this dominant team's looking like. Let's go try to get ourselves back into the postseason and win a Stanley Cup. Also, I've been offered this trade about 700,000 times. No, I'm not accepting it. I'm keeping our medium elite potential prospect. I have a feeling that guy's going to develop into something special. The New Mexico Outlaws are officially here to compete with the best in the entire league. We're going to be finishing third here, 50, 25, and 7. We had a great offense as well as one of the best defenses in the league. It actually might have been the best. It was 2.63 goals allowed per game. Nah, this team's ready to hoist the Stanley Cup. And in order for us to get to this point, we need big time players making big time plays. And that's exactly what Seth Jarvis is doing as he's leading the team with 88 points. But we can't forget about McKenna here. He's got 83. And Kiliev, a fantastic fantastic season from him he's got 81 on top of those guys looking absolutely fantastic on the offensive end we got to check out the goaltending numbers here as Devin Levi's got 40 wins with five shots and 921 to 242 those are Stanley Cup numbers if I've ever seen them so last season we ended up losing to the Stanley Cup champions in the first round here but that's not going to happen this time around we got the Winnipeg Jets in the first round let's make this a quick sweep here and then advance to the second round for the first time in franchise history so I'm not jumping into this game here but I just want to point out this incredible comeback we just had we were trailing four nothing late in the second period but we're making the massive comeback including four third period goals to take this one 
I think this is going to be a series defining moment. So right now, the Winnipeg Jets have been putting up a bigger fight than I was expecting. We're currently down 3-2 in the series. We're also down 2-1 in game six here. Burakovsky, of course, he's picked up the lone goal for us. I'm jumping into this one and I'm probably going to pick up two more goals with Burakovsky because as we know, big time players make big time plays. Also, it really sucks we have to wear these crappy jerseys again. I really want to wear these ones, but I mean, we're the away team. We got to wear the away jerseys. Rajishka is getting sprung for a breakaway here on the penalty kill. Can he tuck this one in? That was a really greasy goal, but you know what? We'll take it. We're tying the game up here with the shorthanded goal. That's some great defense from the team right there. Bruh, that is the worst goal I have ever seen in my life. Why does my goaltender not get up? And unfortunately, in the final seconds here, that Nito Niederreiter goal is going to be the difference maker, and we're losing this one. Ain't no way we lost because our goaltender refused to get up and sat behind the net. It was a three on five. I was prepared for the shot coming from the slot. That's why I went for the dive there. But ain't no way that's the reason we're losing this one. So on this final goal, I'm focused strictly on Alex Tuck because, I mean, this would be a wide open net for him. I'm controlling Clark, so I'm going to go for the block here. It was kind of a weird animation, but you know what? Hey, nothing you can do about it. But hey, Kyle Connor is going to make a nice play. He's going to pass it out to Nito Niederreiter. But here's the stupid thing. Watch this save animation from Devin Levi. Bro, what is this? At least attempt to slide the right direction because you're not making the save like that. But that's going to be the series clinching goal. It's a tough one to process. So clearly, one thing we learned from that Winnipeg Jets series, we need to be better all around. And I think one way we can be better is picking up another superstar defenseman. So I think that's what we're going to be doing over the offseason. Also, I do find this very ironic. Who's going to be the best performing player in the postseason for us? Of course, it's the man, the myth, the legend, Andre Burakovsky. Four goals, two helpers, six points. We should have saw this coming. And Devin Levi, I don't necessarily want to throw you under the bus, but you also have to be much better than this. A 903 and a 366. What happened to the numbers you put up during the regular season? Because this certainly isn't it. So if we're going to be trading for a defenseman in the offseason, we better get some assets and a medium elite potential center. That's definitely going to help the cause. On top of picking up that medium elite potential prospect, we're also going to be securing a low elite potential one. So I'm going to be completely honest. I thought I was dreaming when I saw this contract. Hoglander, you're 28 years old. Why would you expect accept a deal this cheap we're gonna do 3.3 for the next five years that's less than what we're paying you right now hey a win is a win we're gonna take it ryan lindgren on the other hand i'm not doing this deal seven million dollars and you're 31 years old not gonna happen also we're gonna have to wait on brant clark because mans wants 13 million per year and if we do an eight-year deal he wants 20 so we're gonna wait till the beginning of the season to re-sign him so i think this is gonna be our first move right here and it's actually not for a defenseman it's gonna be for a right winger an 85 overall right winger to be exact He's a decent player, low leap potential. He's still pretty young and we're not going to have to pay him too much money. So I think we're going to do this right here. We'll complete that deal after we turn the fourth rounder into a third. And of course, the lucrative seventh round pick. That's always the difference maker. Also, I've accepted the fact Christian Cairo is not going to develop into the player I thought he would. So we're sending him over to the Buffalo Sabres for a third and sixth rounder. Like bro was in the AHL last season. He wasn't even playing for us. Now I knew it was only a matter of time before this day came. But it's coming a lot sooner than I expected. Andre Burakovsky, you no longer have a spot on this team after we picked up that player from San Jose. So unfortunately, I'm sending you to the Minnesota Wild for a third round pick. You will be missed. I am happy to say Brant Clark is being a lot more reasonable with the extension now. We're doing 12.1 million for the next six seasons. It's better than 20 million dollars, that's for sure. So looking at this team right here, you might be thinking, stick on the ice. You were making a big deal about how the defense wasn't good enough in the postseason. Why didn't you add any defensemen? Now that's a fair comment to make, but we do have to realize one thing. During the regular season, we were the best defensive team in the entire league, only allowing like 2.7 goals per game. The next closest was like 2.9 or something. If we're the best defensive team in the league, why would I switch things up? So we're just going to rock the same core once again. And Devin Levi, I actually think you improved over the offseason. You're up to a 90 overall. You have five X factors, exact elite potential now. You've officially reached your peak, and now it's time for you to play the best hockey of your life and allow this team to secure their first Stanley Cup in France franchise history. So right now, the New Mexico Outlaws are one of the best teams in the entire NHL, but I think we can be a bit better. And in order to get better, Broberg, a first round pick and a third rounder are off to the New Jersey Devils, and we're acquiring Luke Hughes. Well, the plan was to acquire Luke Hughes. But don't worry because we do have a third round pick and this came in the Burakovsky deal. Once again, Burakovsky is going to be saving the day here because without this third rounder, we're probably not getting this deal done. In hindsight, I probably could have just traded a lucrative seventh round pick, but you know what? 
we got Luke Hughes and that's exactly what we needed. Now normally I'd be okay with finishing fourth, but the Chicago Blackhawks finished ahead of us in our division and so did the Colorado Avalanche. So that means in the first round we gotta take on Chicago and if we get past Chicago, then we have to take on the Colorado Avalanche. Meanwhile, I think we can officially say Hoglander is on the greatest deal of all time. 83 points in 82 games here. We just gave him a three year extension or four year extension. I don't even remember. All I know is this man's getting paid less than $4 million next season. Also Roger McQueen, keep doing your thing. You were fantastic this season. And to cap this season off, Devin Levi's looking pretty solid. 41 wins, five shots, a 905 and a 282. We weren't as good defensively this season, but you know what? That's perfectly fine because we're scoring more goals. But the regular season means absolutely nothing now. We're in the postseason here and we're taking on the Chicago Blackhawks in the first round. This is going to be a tough matchup for us. Definitely our most difficult opponent so far. So if we want to have a chance of getting out of the first round here, we got to take an early lead in the series. We're in game number one here. The game's tied three to three. I feel like this is the game that I jump into. Ain't no way Robbie Fabry is scoring that goal right there. I'm sorry, but Devin Levi, you gotta make a save for me. Like, you actually have to be kidding me here. I was playing the pass because I was concerned about Bedard and I was concerned about Verana. I didn't think Robbie Fabry had a good enough ankle to get this past the goaltender. Levi, you gotta make this save, man. How is this getting past your arm? Like, come on, man. You might be costing us this series with that goal right there. So I'm going to be completely honest. I don't think it's possible for me to be more disappointed than I am right now. If we win game number one, we would have won this series. But Devin Levi had to allow that weak goal and that's going to cost us the series. Ain't no way that just happened. So it's time for Stick on the Ice to make a statement. These have never backfired on him whatsoever, but I'm going to make a statement right here. We're winning the Stanley Cup next season. The entire core is coming back except for Philip Hedl. We're going to have Luke Hughes for the entire year. The young pieces are going to continue to develop. We're going to be even better next season, and we're going to be hoisting that Stanley Cup. I really can't ask for any more from this team. Like Roger McQueen, 12 points. Kiliev, he's picking up 10. Hoglander, 8. Look at the plus minus here. Everyone played fairly good. Our bottom six might not have been the best, but hey, we performed when we needed to. I can't complain with what happened. Now, Devin Levi, these numbers right here aren't even that bad, but you allowed one weak goal, and that ended up being the difference maker for us. Now, similar to our last draft, we're going to be starting off with a fantastic prospect. We're bringing in a mediumly potential center. And we're not done there because we're also going to be bringing in another mediumly potential forward. This one's going to be a sniper, though. And we're going to continue to pick up some more elite prospects in this draft, but this one's going to be a low elite potential defenseman. During the re sign phase, there was wasn't any deals that we had to make but we got to give out some extensions here and Luke Hughes I'll give you 6.1 million for the next five seasons meanwhile this other defenseman whose name I'm yet to learn I'll be giving you two years at 2.4 million he's been on our team for a handful of years now the least I could do is learn his name now this next signing right here is gonna be a high risk high reward move Qdobin I'm gonna give you seven years at 2.8 million you're already a 76 overall at 21 years old I'm gonna put you on the third line I'm gonna give you a ton of opportunities to develop with this team and I think that contract will age very well for us now we're not going to be making too many moves during the offseason but I would like to pick up this defenseman from the Edmonton Oilers. It's not going to cost us too much. Well it's actually going to cost us a bit more than what I was expecting. We already know what the difference maker is going to be here. The lucrative seventh round pick. It's always saving the day for us. That's the difference maker in this deal. Apparently that completely changes the deal for Edmonton. And then right after acquiring him for the Edmonton Oilers we'll do four years at 2.7 million. Okay what happened here? Why is it showing a New York Islanders logo? We didn't even get him from the New York Islanders. We got him from the Edmonton Oilers. Now we still hold his rights. 2.7 for the next four years. That might be the exact same contract I just offered him by don't recall. And now he's on our team. All right then. Okay, I'm going to be completely honest. If we do not win a Stanley Cup this season, then this game is completely broken. We're going to put Roger McQueen on the first line over Gavin McKenna because apparently even though Gavin McKenna has a perfect line fit here, if we swap the two, we actually get a plus five overall boost and then a plus four overall boost. Couldn't explain how that works, but you know what? We're going to rock with it. Also, Sharoff, he's up to an 87 overall playing third line minutes. This man's development's been insane for us. We're also only paying him 5.9 for the next seven years, so that's going to work out well for us. Us. Also, Qdobin, he fits on the third line. That's where we're going to be playing him. This team's elite. So we're going to be rocking Kivi Hardy with Brant Clark, Luke Hughes with Galilina, and then Mikey Anderson with this guy right here. Still haven't learned his name. 
I probably should before the end of this video. And to top it all off, we actually have the best goaltending tandem we've ever had. Devin Levi's here, 87 overall. He's still our guy, but we also have Caden McMillan. This is the guy we drafted a handful of years ago, 34th overall. His development's been insane so far. He's already up to an 85. You never know. He might be our starting goaltender sooner than later. He might be two overalls below Devin Levi, but he's also five years younger. Okay, so I think we have to make a difficult decision here, and I think we're going to trade Kivi Haru because I completely forgot about Mark. Marcel Guerin here, 20 years old, already an 83 overall. He has low elite potential. More than likely, he's going to finish with elite potential, especially if he's an 83 overall at 20 years old. Because when we check out a guy like Kivi Haru, he's an 83 overall at 24 years old. He's four years older, but Guerin can do the exact same thing as him. Also, Guerin's a lot cheaper. So Kivi Haru, I think we're going to be trading you. So Kivi Haru, you're not going to be the guy for us anymore. So I'm going to ship you over to the New York Islanders for two third round picks. Through making this trade right here, we're also going to be clearing up 6.2 million for the next next couple years. I can guarantee you now that we've made that deal, Kivi Hardy is going to develop into like an 88 overall defenseman. I'm calling it right now, that trade's going to backfire on us. So it should be no surprise that the New Mexico Outlaws continue to be one of the best teams in the entire league, 48, 27, and 7, and we would have had a better record if we didn't suck after the trade deadline. Like this team was abysmal, I think we probably won like 6 games after the trade deadline. Things weren't going good for us, but we have a really solid offense, the defense is amazing for this team, and we already know who's on this team so they should be winning a Stanley Cup. Now I definitely can't complain about these numbers right here. Hoglander 77 points but he picked up 41 goals. We're paying him 3.3 million. I just want to emphasize that. Brady could chuck 46 goals 76 points. McKenna's picking up 73. McQueen's got 69 points. Goaltending wise I can't really complain about what Devin Levi did here. 38 wins 6 shots a 901 to 298. Never mind I will complain about these numbers right here. I need these to be better if we're winning a Stanley Cup. And of course why would things ever be easy for the New Mexico outlaws we have the arizona coyotes in the first round they were one of the top teams in the entire league they were either fifth or sixth for some reason we keep having to take on the top teams in the entire league but you know what if you want to win a stanley cup you gotta be able to beat the best at this point i don't even know what's wrong with the new mexico outlaws we're down 3-0 in the game and we're down 2-0 in the series if I'm going to score three goals here, I'm going to need a lot of time to do it. So I'm jumping into this one right at the beginning of the third period. So you know what? I'm going to change things up here. Both teams are wearing their home jerseys. Actually, Arizona, you're going to wear your away jersey. We never get to wear the home jerseys. So far, I don't think we've won a game wearing the away jerseys. So we got to switch things up. Also, not going to lie, these jerseys are a bit atrocious now that I see them on the ice. But you know what? We're not going to worry about it. Also, I just thought I mentioned this because I realized it after taking like two shots. The goaltender in the net for the Arizona Coyotes our backup from last season. And the one thing that helps us, we already know how our backup plays and Kilia is going to get started here with a nice backhanded goal. And we're going to continue to put on the pressure here, but you know what? Let's drop it back to our defenseman and let him cook. He's going to weave in between Arizona's defense before going to his backhand as well. And we've just picked up two straight goals, but we're not done there because Luke Hughes, it's time for you to turn on the Jets from our defensive zone all the way to the offensive. You're flying right now and you're going to tie this game up with a massive goal. So here we go. We completed the three goal comeback. We're in overtime next goal wins we gotta lock in and pick up this last goal there we go roger mcqueen a breakaway can he end this yes he can the four goal comeback is complete with 4.3 seconds left in overtime here we're gonna be ending this one we're making it a 2-1 series now we just gotta pray the cpu can fight back and finish this off for us and i will say we're one and oh when we wear our home jerseys just gonna point that out okay the one thing i do want to point out here because we're losing in the first round who would have saw that one coming in the games i didn't play our team scored eight goals and the lone goal i played i scored four that means in the first round we scored 12 goals and i scored 33 percent of them in one game i'm sorry but you cannot convince me the thing that let us down in the postseason was our scoring out of all the things on this team scoring let us down i mean don't get me wrong we were not great defensively by any means even devin levi these numbers you're not winning a stanley cup with those but i mean come on offense is letting us down that's a joke so eventually this team's got to get it together we're too good of a team to be falling in the first round every single season we've been a top five team for the past three years now maybe even four eventually we got to get it together and get out of the first round hopefully that's next season i set expectations of us winning a stanley cup for this season only for us to lose in the first round i don't know what to say anymore so like usual we're going to be picking up some decent players in the draft and in the second round we're going to be securing a low lead potential defenseman so this guy right here is not going to be the last fantastic prospect we draft we're 
we're getting a medium lead potential goaltender, but wait till you see our next two selections. In the fifth round, we're going to be securing a low lead potential grinder. He's probably going to be a good trade asset for us because I can't see him joining the team at any point. And then in the sixth round, we're going to be getting another low lead potential player, but this one's going to be a sniper. Now, I'm not necessarily against bringing back a guy like Mikey Anderson, but I'm not going to commit $7 million to him at 32 years old. That's just not smart cap management right there. And even Kyler Yamamoto, for what he provides for this team, I don't really want to do $3 million for two years. We can definitely get a replacement for less money. So I'm not going to lie, when it came to the extensions that we had to give out here, I was a bit concerned, but Seth Jarvis 5.5 for the next six seasons, I have no issue with that deal right there. Another guy I don't have an issue paying, that's going to be Kiliev here, 6.2 for the next five seasons, that's another fantastic contract for this team. So I see the potential in a guy like Holstrom here. He's a 77 overall at 21 years old with low elite potential. To be a 77 overall at 21 years old, you're going to develop into something great. So here's eight years at 1.2. 5 million. Also, we do have a bit of extra money here, so Max Domi, welcome back to the New Mexico Outlaws. Never mind, you never played for our team. I got the other rebuild I was doing mixed up with this one. Max Domi has never played for this team. Also, to finish off our deals here, I'm doing Jacob Bryson to a two-year deal at 1.9 million. The difference between paying a 79 overall and an 81 is absolutely ridiculous. Jacob Bryson, 1.8 million. If we want to get an 81 overall, we're looking at the $4 million range. How does that work? So the team's going to be looking basically the exact same as last year with the addition of Holstrom here. He's going to be playing on the fourth line. We'll see if he'll be able to develop into something. Honestly, we have a fantastic forward court here and I don't really want to mess that up. Defensively, we already know what we can do. We're one of the best in the entire game. Although our third pairing is a bit weak here, there are lockdown defensive pairs. They're going to be able to keep the puck out of the net. And to finish it all off, we have a battle of the goaltenders this season. We have Caden McMillan and Devin Levi, both at 85 overalls. They're going to be battling for the number one spot here. And I'm going to be completely honest, Caden McMillan's definitely the future goaltender for this team. He's five years younger than Devin Levi, and they're the same overall. So it's only a matter of time before he becomes our true number one, and Devin Levi's getting shipped out. Okay, so we're about 20 games in, and you have to remember who's on this team. So explain to me how we're the worst offensive team in the entire league. Okay, we're not the worst, but we're like right down here. We're 29th in the league right now, 8, 12, and 1. We can't score. This team cannot score to save their lives. I don't know why. Defensively, we're also not that good. Good. So I really don't know what happened to this team because I mean, we only lost two guys over the offseason. I don't know what changed. So I just want to mention, I didn't make a single move after that 21 game mark. I just let the team keep rolling. Seventh in the entire league, 38, 25, and three. Our offense is pretty good while our defense is smartened up. All right then, like I actually couldn't tell you what happened. The team just started playing good. And I think the biggest difference was this team actually just started scoring goals. I think that's literally the only thing that happened. Seth Jarvis has 20 goals right now. Hoglander, 25. Brady Kachuk, 26. That was the biggest difference. Also, when it comes to goaltending, I actually don't know who the number one is. They've been split and starts the entire year, but when it comes to their save percentage and goals against, those are basically identical. So I don't think it really matters who we rock with in the postseason. Both of these are solid options. So I think in the history of me doing rebuilds, this has never happened to me. I ran out of time. I went the entire trade deadline and could not get a single move done. I have never sat here for so long that the time limit ran out. So I guess we're not making any moves and we're gonna rock the team we have right now. So when the season finished out here, we were an okay team, eighth in the entire league, 45, 31, and six. I can't really complain too much. The offense, it did its thing. Well, the defense, not too bad. But this Colorado Avalanche team, averaging over four goals per game, they have an incredible record right here, 58, 20, and four. I'm concerned about taking them on the postseason because eventually we're gonna have to. So y'all gotta hear me out here. I can't complain with the production from this team. We have amazing depth scoring from top to bottom. Can't complain about that whatsoever. However, we don't really have a true number one go-to guy. Brady Kachuk, 67 points, not bad. Roger McQueen, 73. McKenna, 71. Like, we had a ton of great depth scoring here, but we don't really have a true number one guy we can rely on. Over the offseason, that's the goal. I'm going to trade for one of the best players in the entire league. I don't care what it takes. I don't care what we have to give up. We're going to make a move. That's actually probably a lie because we do have some good prospects coming into the system next season. Meanwhile, when it comes to goaltenders, I don't care who we run in the postseason. Levi, 25 wins mcmillan he had 20 four shouts to three shutouts the save percentage and goals against they're virtually the same but whichever one of y'all is in between the pipes for us you better lock in we have the national predators in the first round i want to reach the second round we have been a good team for far too long to not reach the second round. So far, neither team has played any type of defense in this game whatsoever. It's currently tied 7-7. We have a 2-1 series lead. 
I want to finish this game off. I want to give us the 3-1 series lead, and then I want us to advance to the second round. Once we have a 3-1 series lead, all y'all have to do is perform. Also, we're rocking the home jerseys once again. We're not doing any of that away jersey nonsense. So there's one thing that our team's really good at, and I'm really good at, and that's scoring backhanded goals. It doesn't matter if it's the short side or the far side, we're going to score a backhanded goal. And after the years of disappointment, it's finally happened. The New Mexico Outlaws are going to be advancing to the second round. And in the second round, we already know who we're going to be taking on. It's going to be the Colorado Avalanche. Now, if we somehow find a way to get past the Colorado Avalanche, we're going to be hoisting a Stanley Cup this season. There's no doubt about it. I don't believe there's any team right now that can even compete with Colorado. But if we can somehow complete the upset here, then the rest of the playoffs should be a breeze. So this Colorado Avalanche team, they just find a way to keep on scoring goals. On top of having a 3-2 series lead, they also have a 4-1 lead in game six here. If we lose this one, we're eliminated from the playoffs. So this is the game I'm jumping in. And on top of that, for the first time in this video, we're the home team. We're repping our home jerseys when we should be repping them. Also, what is that tape job by Brant Clark there? You know what? I'm not going to worry about it. We're winning this game. So we're going to be scoring a goal here. I'm going to spoil it right now. But how does Hoglander avoid that check right there? That doesn't make any sense to me. He's going to go bar down here. He's making this a two goal game. But how did he avoid that check? It doesn't make sense to me. So Colorado is eventually going to get themselves a power play in the third period due to a CPU penalty. And this Colorado power play is just way too good. And it's unstoppable. Later in the period, we're not going to discuss what happened because Nathan McKinnon just did unspeakable things to our defensemen. Bro needed a map. Okay, I want to know who picked up the penalty here. Was it the diving block I went for or was it the guy trailing? Because I mean, when it came to the diving block, I actually thought I played that pretty clean. But was it the guy trailing that picked up the penalty there? I just want to know. Bro, that's a weak tripping penalty. I ain't gonna lie. I mean, to be fair, we're not gonna be making the comeback in this game. Four goals in five minutes. Let's just start playing incredibly risky. Yeah, so we're not going to talk about what happened in this game right here. And we're not going to talk about this last goal that was scored. Colorado might be up 7-2. to two. Yeah, we're just going to ignore this. Colorado's winning the Stanley Cup. I refuse to believe there's any team beating them. Okay, how did the Dallas Stars beat that Colorado team in 7 games? That makes no sense to me. Colorado was just a different breed of good. I've never seen a team that good. So I think we have to face the fact that offensively, we're not good enough. I think we're making a decision when it comes to goaltending. McMillan's going to be the guy from here on out. He's 85 overall, 25 years old. We're going to hope that he can develop and be the guy for us. That means we're going to be trading Devin Levi away, but maybe not yet because we technically stole McMillan under contract for two more years, like 2.5 million. So we can keep both goaltenders around. Okay, I just want to show who's on this team right now. You have Nathan McKinnon, Artemi Pernarin, Kale McCarr, Miko Rantanen, Brock Besser, Kirby Doc, and you know who else is here? Rupe Hints. Yeah, Rupe Hints might be 35 years old at this point, but look how many studs they have on this team. It's ridiculous. How they afforded all these guys, I have no clue. Because you're still paying Rupe Hint 6.2 million at 35. It just doesn't make sense. So after that disappointing second round exit, things are getting more disappointing. We're not even going to be securing an elite potential player in the draft. Now, I'm not going to lie. I knew Garen was going to be asking for an extension here, but I thought he was going to be looking for $11 million. I can definitely do eight years at 6.8. Since we can't get a deal with the St. Louis Blues done, we've moved over to the Edmonton Oilers, and I'm going to try to acquire Rubrock. We're going to start with a first rounder, Seth. Jarvis in a second. I don't think that's going to be enough. Of course it's not. I guess we're going to have to give up one of our good prospects. And it looks like Jacobson's the good prospect we're going to be giving up here. He has medium elite potential, 77 overall at 22 years old, but we have to realize what we're going to be acquiring from the Edmonton Oilers. If we can get a deal done for one of these top players, because it's impossible, we're throwing Seth Jarvis in this deal as well. This should be more than enough to get one player. There we go. We finally got the guy we need, but we're not done there. We got to make a few more improvements. In regards to Hoglander, it looks like age is finally starting to catch up to him because he's dropped to an 84 overall at 31 years old. He's going to continue to decline, so we better make a move quick. And I think Wheel could be the guy for us. 23 years old. He's an 87 overall. Let's try to bring him onto the team. Okay, I'm going to be honest. I don't even know why I offered that package up because I knew for a fact it wasn't going to get accepted. But you know what? We got some good prospects here, and I think we can get a deal done. Now, this move is going to be strictly done 
done to clear up cap space. That defenseman I attempted to re-sign, we don't have money for him anymore. So we're picking up Caswell from the Pittsburgh Penguins in order to clear up 2.5 mil. So we do have to make one more deal before we get into next season. And that's going to have us picking up Lysel from the Minnesota Wild. We need a playmaker for the bottom six, but unfortunately in this deal, we're going to have to give up Kiliev. He's been a great piece to this team, but unfortunately the time has come to trade him away. So we're making some high risk, high reward moves here. Fitzpatrick, I'm going to put you on the first line here. You're an 82 overall sniper. You have medium elite potential. You're going to develop into something. The rest of the forward core here looks absolutely incredible. The bottom six, that's great as well. We might have a couple guys who are centers playing right wing, but you know what? We're not going to worry about that. Defensively, we actually improved our team through that Minnesota Wild deal as our third pairing is now better. Meanwhile, when it comes to goaltending, we're going to be rocking both of these guys once again this season. 285 overalls. We need one of them to step up and become a superstar goaltender though. And if it's going to be any of these guys, it's got to be McMillan. So there's no more excuses with the team. For the first time in franchise history, they're first in the entire league. 58, 17, and 7. We had a great offense. The defense was incredible. 2.54 win. All you have to do is win. Now, the scoring wasn't necessarily a lot better than last season, but we had guys performing. Roger McQueen, 86 points. Brady Kachuk, 80. Rubrock, he's picking up 74. And look at the goal scoring numbers here. We actually can rely on players. Also, Fitzpatrick, 48 points in your rookie year. You're up to an 84 overall. I can't wait to see what you become. And when it comes to goaltending numbers, we got to give Devin and Levi the start here. 28 wins, four shots, a 924 and a 228. He's the guy for us. He's the certified man. He proved that this season. But I have a feeling the CPU is going to start McMillan, but I'm not going to allow that. Devin Levi's got to be the guy for us. Now it's time to start the New Mexico Outlaws dynasty. We're first in the entire league. We've been an incredible team for the past how many years, but we haven't been able to perform in the postseason. That changes now. Also, we're taking on the Dallas Stars. Thought I mentioned that. So game number three is a crucial one. The game's tied three to three. The series is tied one to one. We got to take the lead in the series, and that's why I'm stepping in. And you know what? We're getting incredibly risky. We're rocking the away jerseys. And it looks like we're finally going to see a bit of success in the away jerseys. And it's going to be coming from Fitzpatrick, the rookie. He's going to be picking up the OT winner and the biggest goal of his career. Well, so far, I mean, he's in his rookie year. This can't be happening. We cannot lose in the first round once again. We're going into game seven here. I am so sick and tired of this team underperforming. We were borderline a 60 win team. And we're on pace to lose in the first round here. That can happen. We're going to simulate the first period. We have a 2-1 lead. In the second, we're going to be holding on to that one goal lead. We're going to simulate the rest of the game here. We're going to hold on. This was way closer than it should have been, but we're walking away with a 3-2 win. So now that we've got through the first round, it's time for revenge. The Colorado Avalanche. Last season, they were the best team in the entire league, but things are different this time around. We're the best team, and it's time to shut these boys down. So I have some good news and I have some bad news. We're winning game one of the series, but now we're in game six and we're down 3-2 in the series. This is a must win for us. It's a one goal game. We're on the power play. I'm stepping into this one. I'm going to even this series up. And then we just need to pray that the CPU can perform when we need it to. A nice poke check in the offensive zone is going to be poking the puck away from Val Mackey. A shot's going to be thrown towards the net, but Brady Kachuk's going to be right there for the rebound. And he's going to tie this game up. And with that late goal from Brady Kachuk, it looks like we're going to be heading into overtime. Or I thought we would be heading into overtime, but Roger McQueen, he's going to be coming up clutch here. 3.7 seconds left in the game. And we're actually taking this one home. So here we go game seven for all the marbles this will send us to the conference finals all i need is new mexico to show up for 60 minutes i'm simulating the entire game we're not going period by period what a surprise we're gonna lose three unanswered in the third period three goals in six minutes what is wrong with this team i don't even know what to do anymore new mexico the best they've ever done is the second round we are one of the best teams in the entire league season in and season out, but for some reason we just can't get it together. I don't know why that is. So this was clearly the issue. Devin Levi with a 340 goals against. From here on out, McMillan's our guy. We're trading Devin Levi. We're either picking up a great defenseman or another forward piece. I don't know which it's going to be, but we're improving the team here. 
because something's got to change. Okay, so we're getting a bunch of assets we're going to throw into trades. The first one's going to be a low lead potential two-way defender. The next is going to be another low lead potential player, but this one's going to be a sniper. And to top it all off, we're also going to be securing a medium lead potential goaltender. So we already know Fitzpatrick's going to be one of the key pieces for this team in the future. So we're doing an eight-year deal here at 5.2 million. He's playing first line minutes. He's going to develop into an incredible player for us. We got to keep him around. Now this defenseman, I'm not giving $7 million. You're an 83 over Overall. we'll get a replacement that's an 83 overall and we'll pay him like 3 million another guy i want to make sure we bring back is caswell three years at 3.1 he does a great job on the fourth line so we better keep him around meanwhile with the rest of the pieces here i think we're going to be letting them walk or they're going to be traded so we clearly have to make some massive adjustments to the team and i think the first addition is going to be pog from here on out i'm calling him darcy poggers so we're picking up poggers from the arizona coyotes on top of picking up Poggers, we're also going to be picking up Cowden from the Florida Panthers. Well, of course, after we add a 7th rounder into the deal, because the lucrative 7th rounder always makes the difference here. Still haven't figured out how 7th round picks are this valuable though. I don't understand how that's always the difference maker. Also, I forgot to mention, I just gave both of these guys extensions. Cowden, I believe it's 5 years at 2.8 million or 2.7, and then Poggers, 5 years at 3.2. So we have to continue to improve the bottom six here. And I feel like Gerard would be a nice piece. He's an 85 overall, two-way forward. That's exactly what we need. He also picked up 33 goals last season. I'm doing whatever it takes to add this man to our team. I mean, that's a lot. I don't want to give up more than a second and third round pick, but that should be enough for him. So we're going to do one final move before we get into next season. And we're going to be picking up a left defenseman for two prospects. So here we go. We're entering year 11 with the New Mexico Outlaws. Things have certainly not been going our way, but you know what? You can't tell me that this isn't one of the best teams in the entire league. Like looking at the defense here, even that's incredible. While well, the goaltending, we already know what's happening here. Devin Levi's the number one guy. McMillan's gonna be our number two. We already know this team's making the playoffs. We already know they're gonna be one of the best in the entire league. They just need to perform when it matters most and win a Stanley Cup. Because so far, it's been very disappointing in the postseason. So at this point, there's literally no more excuses that we could have. 61, 17, and four. We were better than the Colorado Avalanche and they won 56 games. Of course, the Colorado Avalanche won 56 games we scored over four goals a game that's better than colorado and we only allowed 2.5 a game there's not a team even close to us offensively i mean that's a lie colorado is pretty close but defensively no one can touch us show to the legend roger mcqueen for picking up 95 points here brady kachuk 87 rubrock he's got 85 but we also have to give a massive shout out to fitzpatrick he's got 44 goals here in year number two he's up to an 86 overall this man's going to be a beast now our goaltending numbers are incredibly skewed Devin Levi, 61 wins, 7 shots, and 917 at 242. Now, the reason he played all 82 games is I turned auto rotation off before the postseason last year because I wanted to make sure Devin Levi was our guy the entire time and they didn't put McMillan in. I forgot to turn auto rotation back on, so we're going to have Devin Levi playing all 82. But hey, I'm not going to complain because we did just win 61 games. Now, the first round should be a breeze for us, although we are playing the St. Louis Blues, so they should put up a fight. Nah, but seriously, even though the St. Louis Blues are my favorite team and the greatest franchise of all time respectfully we probably should take this team down in three games so in between videos i changed my mind i'm no longer going to be jumping into any of these games and playing them myself we're just going to allow the cpu to go ahead and cook here and hopefully they do a good job cooking i mean so far things are looking fantastic we just swept the st louis blues and we're off to the second round just like that Okay, so the Colorado Avalanche just lost in the first round to the Chicago Blackhawks. If we were ever going to win a Stanley Cup, it's this season right here. We no longer have to go through Colorado. We're the best team in the entire league. Now, all we got to do is perform when it matters most. So you know what? In my head, I thought this might happen. We got swept. But the worst part about getting swept here, not only did we get outscored and outscored by a lot, in game one, we lost 9-1. to one. We lost 9-1 to one to the Chicago Blackhawks. They took out the Colorado Avalanche, the team I feared the most. We won 61 games and then got swept to the Chicago Blackhawks. They scored nine goals in game number one. I don't even know what to say anymore. I really don't. For reference, the Chicago Blackhawks, yeah, they were a good team. They had 49 wins this season. We had 61. Just want to point that out. Our offense, definitely better than the Chicago Blackhawks. And our defense, incredible. How did this defense allow nine goals in one game? We're never going to win a Stanley Cup. So I don't really know what it's going to take. We were a 61 win team and got swept in the second round. I don't know how we're going to make this team any better than what we were this season. I'm going to do my best to make us even better. But even still, 61 wins only to lose in the second round. 
Doesn't sit right with me. And Devin Levi, I was ready to gas you up. You were looking absolutely incredible in the first round. And then what happened in the second round? So I'm still incredibly disappointed with what happened, but we are bouncing back in the draft slightly. We got a low elite potential playmaker in the first round. So we're going to continue to pick up good prospects in the draft here because with 128th overall, we're getting a medium elite potential goaltender. So I really don't care how many elite potential prospects we get here because all of them are getting traded. We got to rebuild this team. We have to somehow make them better than they were. I don't even know anymore. I feel like I'm building a very good team here, but somehow they just keep letting me down. So we don't have much money to work with in the re-sign phase, but I do want to bring Gerard back. We're going to try six years at $9 million. This is the last day I can offer a contract. So if he doesn't accept, he's going to be walking. I mean, ideally we sign him and then maybe do a sign and trade. Hopefully he signs the extension and it looks like he will. So we're going to be keeping him around. So I have a plan here. I'm not really sure how much the plan's going to work, but in my head, it makes a lot of sense. So we got to try to pick up two defensemen here from the Boston Bruins. We need a right defense and a left defenseman. They both have to be on cheap contracts though. Maybe both of these guys could be the move right here. I think that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be picking up these two guys from the Boston Bruins in exchange for Gerard. We're going to clear up Gerard's $9 million in this deal, and I think that could be the move. So we're going to offer that over to the Boston Bruins. They're saying yes. Now this was the big risk we're taking. These guys are under contract for this season, but I have to give them extensions. I'm banking on the fact that they're below 80 overalls. We're going to be able to sign them to decent extensions. Because for example, here's one 80 overall defenseman we have on our team right now. If I offer him a contract extension, he wants $6 million. I'm not willing to do $6 million for an 80 overall. However, what does a 79 overall want? $5 million. Okay, that trade logic did not work for me. What does this 79 overall want? He wants $3 million. I'll do five years at $3 million. That's a good contract just by the way contracts work in this game. This is going to be a steal of a deal for a defenseman. And just to make sure this deal goes through, we're going to do 3.1 for the next five seasons. You could say the 80 overall player and 79 overall player we just gave an extension to are virtually the same player. One of them wants $3 million more than the other. Other. Don't know how that works, but I guess that's the way it works and we're going to have to work with it. Meanwhile, the other defenseman we just picked up, next season we'll qualify him as an RFA and then flip him somewhere else. So we are going to make two signings here when it comes to forwards. And I think the first one's going to be Reimer to a two-year deal at $2.6 million. He'll be good for the bottom six and he plays really good defense, so that's where we could use him. And then the final guy we're also going to be picking up for the bottom six is going to be Green Tree. We're going to give him two years at $2.1 million. So after making those few moves in free agency, this is where our team's looking like. The top six continues to be one the best in the entire league here while the bottom six it might be taking a slight step back but with the plus two overall boost on the third and fourth line it's looking solid while defensively the top four here continues to look pretty solid while the third pairing definitely could use some work but hey when you have to pay 79 overall players six million dollars you work with what you got and on top of working with what you got we got Devin Levi here 87 overall but we have a new backup this time around he also has medium lead potential maybe he'll be able to develop into something that McMillan wasn't able to who knows okay guys so we have class and butts here and he's joined us uh he's gonna drop a couple of gems for us real quick before we get into this season all right ladies and gentlemen uh as you saw we had a we had a really great start to to the season there um we we definitely had the food cooking in the pot that uh that season and uh we we may have left it on the burner a little bit too long and by the end we kind of ended up with some burnt gumbo and that's uh that's not what we're here for today today we are here to cut the uh cut the loose ends off the team that aren't aren't doing us any well uh they may have played decent but uh they aren't pr playing great and we need greatness on this team so uh going into this next season we're going to be uh starting her off with a uh, an amazing team right off the bat so we can be an amazing team right at the end now clapping bots i couldn't have said that better myself let's get into the season win 60 games once again and then not get swept in the second round to be a complete disappointment like usual so it's official the colorado avalanche are my biggest ops from here on out they're finishing first in the entire league while we're finishing second second 56 22 and 4 we had a great offense but Colorado's was a bit better we had a fantastic defense and we're actually going to be better than Colorado in that aspect so I guess we're beating them somewhere Brady Kachuk's going to be having the best season of his career here as he's picking up 107 points Gavin McQueen a great season from him as well 97 points Roger McQueen 93 can't complain with the production from these guys and then in between the pipes Devin Levi the best season of his career well technically not the best season because he was better last year but we're not going to worry about that 47 wins here five shots a 904 and a two 78 win a stanley cup just win so i feel like i can confidently say that no matter what matchup we're in we're the underdog I don't care that we won 56 games. We're the underdog against the Minnesota Wild. At this point, it's honestly just a joke. We're down 3-1 in the series. 
We lost in five games. How does this happen every single year? Am I just a terrible GM and I'm building a horrible team? Because I don't think that's the case. We were a 56 win team, one of the best offenses in the league and one of the best defenses. But the second the postseason comes around, this team just flops. I don't even know what it is anymore. Like, are we just a bunch of frauds? Because there's no way we're frauds. We're such a good team. Colorado's winning the Stanley Cup. That's great. Okay, Fitzpatrick has five points in five games. Nashville's getting the first overall pick. I'm not even going to look at the playoff bracket. Barkov, Eichel, Ajo, congrats to you guys. Kaprizov, Brat, Clayton Keller. I mean, there's a lot of good players here. A lot of good players retired at the same time. So shout out to all those guys. Like, what do we actually do with the team we have here? Because I don't understand how we constantly are a complete disappointment. We have a great team here. But for some reason in the postseason, they just don't perform. On top of the playoffs being a massive disappointment, this draft sucks right here, so we're gonna be acquiring a future third round pick. Like when I say this draft sucks, I mean it was abysmal. We had one selection, he ended up being medium top four, so I can't really complain with that. But man, there was no depth in this draft whatsoever. So we have one chance here to re-sign Wheel. 11.785 million for the next six seasons. That's the most money we can offer him because we're out of money. Then we have to qualify all of these RFAs, but don't worry, things get way worse. Let's see who's going to be a free agent next season. Roger McQueen, Brant Clark, Brady Kachuk, Rubrock, and Luke Hughes. All of those guys are going to be free agents. We are not going to have the money for all of them. So when saying that, more than likely we're about to make seven trades. And also, all we can do is pray, is Wheel going to be returning to the team? No, he's not. So we're going to be losing him for nothing here. And then we have to somehow figure out how we're going to be bringing everyone back to the team. I don't know how it's going to be possible. I don't even know if we're going to be able to do it. But decisions are going to have to be made here. So these are all of the guys that are going to be free agents next season. And then when looking at goaltending, Devin Levi is also going to be a free agent. He's dropped to an 85 overall starter potential though. So I'm probably going to be trading him away and we're going to get a different goaltender. Roger McQueen, I need to bring you back onto this team. What are you looking for? That is way more reasonable than what I was expecting. So we're going to be doing an eight year deal with Roger McQueen here. And we're probably going to be going for around $11 million. That's actually exactly what we'll do. We'll do $11 million per year for the next eight seasons. Another guy I want to bring back is Rubrock and he's being incredibly reasonable as well we're gonna do 10 million per year for the next six seasons brady kachuk on the other hand you're already 35 years old i don't really want to pay you 10 million dollars for next season at 36 because i don't know how much you're gonna be declining over the off season so i'm gonna be trading you away on top of trading brady kachuk away i'm also gonna be trading this defenseman away because man's won 6.5 million and 81 overall we've been through this it's not happening Brant Clark, what are you looking at for an extension? 12.9 million, it's a bit much, but you know what? We only have three years left, so I might as well keep you around. So for an extension, how does $11.5 million sound for you? So you know what? It's time to start cooking up trades here, and we're going to be starting with Hemming here. He's a perfect fit on the first line. He's an 88 overall, and he'd be a nice upgrade from Brady Kachuk, because I mean, Brady Kachuk, as we know, 35 years old. Hemming's like 29 or something, so he'll definitely be able to stay on the team longer than Brady Kachuk would. You know what? I can give him draft picks, and I know for a fact they want draft picks especially for next season here's a second rounder as well a first second rounder brady kachuk and luke hughes for hemming he's gonna fit on the first line here we're not getting the deal done yet because they need a seventh round pick because god forbid we don't offer them a seventh round pick there we go the deal's done so i figured out how to beat the colorado avalanche i know how we can become better than this team we got to take them out from the inside, so I'm taking away one of their best players. Colorado might think they're getting a steal here for getting that RFA, but that man also wants $6 million at an 81 overall. Now that we've done a bit of cap management through trades, I'll give Green Tree a two-year extension here at $2 million. We got to keep him on the team here. He's an important asset. What can I say? Another guy I want to keep on the team here is going to be Reimer, and we're going to be doing 2.5 for the next three seasons. It's actually a pretty good deal for a bottom six guy. Thank God we have a bit of extra money here through making all the trades we have because i do not want to pay this man seven million dollars for more than one season the fact that i have to pay him seven million dollars for one season actually bothers me a little bit but you know what apparently that's what an 83 overall defenseman is worth also i did give him more than he wanted just to make sure he comes to this team we have 18 million dollars to work with we can spare a couple dollars another guy we're also going to be picking up on a longer term deal i shouldn't say longer it's only three years i guess that is longer rizzy three years at three million dollars we'll bring him onto the team he's a defensive defenseman he can't make us worse and then we'll bring another defenseman here on a similar contract. It's going to be Schaefer, 3x3. Three three. Those are going to be the three free agent signings we're making. And I have no clue what this team's going to look like. I know our defense is cooked. That's a fact. 
The rest of the team, however, I'm not too sure about. Now, before we head into next season, we do need to make one final trade, and that's going to be picking up a different goaltender. We're going to be getting Turakov from the National Predators. This team didn't want to make a deal with me earlier. We're getting one done now, though. Y'all better accept this deal. I do not care what it takes. We need a new goaltender. Devin Levi, I got nothing against you. I mean, you've been a great goaltender for this team. I mean, in saying that, you also couldn't get us out of the second round. So, yeah, I'm not too attached to you. All right, so here's what the team's looking like for this season. Basically, this entire core is going to be coming back next season. So, for the next two years, this is what we're working with. A great top six, a questionable bottom six. But you know what? I think they can hold it down. Defensively, we have two guys. Yeah, that's all I can say about our defense. We have two players. We'll see how much that backfires on us. But luckily, we do have a great goaltender in between the pipes and Turakov here. I don't know. Maybe he can steal us a couple games, win us a Stanley Cup or two. Expectations aren't too high for Turakov, though. Let's be completely honest. This team has been a massive disappointment so far. Now, I don't think it should be much of a surprise that we're taking a step back this season. Sixth in the entire league, 49-28-5. But there's something that we definitely have to celebrate. They finally fell off. The Colorado Avalanche, they're a bunch of frauds. Fifth in the division. These boys didn't even make the playoffs. They can't compete with us anymore. We can finally hoist a Stanley Cup because we don't have to take on this team in the postseason. I mean, granted, we lost to the Minnesota Wild last season or something. So yeah, the Colorado Avalanche might be our biggest ops, but they haven't actually dominated us that much in the postseason because we rarely ever go against that team. Okay, our top six here was amazing. The bottom six, maybe not the greatest in the world, but hey, look at the plus minuses of this team right here. We know how to score goals and we know how to keep the puck out of the net. And what's the goaltending numbers looking like? 41 wins, seven shots, and nine 11 and a 272. Hey, if we can win a Stanley Cup, that's all that matters. Whatever you do, don't lose in the first round. I don't care what happens after the first round. I mean, that's a lie. We need to win a Stanley Cup this season, but whatever you do, do not lose in the first round. You know what? We're simming game five in silence here. We're winning that one. Can we win game six? I mean, it's not even in silence. I'm talking over it. We're going to game seven. You know what? I could not be bothered to use Simcast. We're simming it like this. Can we win? Of course we can't. We're losing two to one. We lost in the first round once again. I don't think New Mexico is ever going to win a Stanley Cup. We have two more seasons to win a Stanley Cup. Since about season number five, we've been a top six team in the entire league. A top six team in the entire league for over a decade. You could classify us as a dynasty that's never won a Stanley Cup. Because how often do you have a team finish top six in the entire league for this long? long of a period and not win a Stanley Cup. It's got to be unheard of. Now clearly we definitely didn't score enough goals here but what the goaltending numbers look like? Why do they fall apart in the postseason? This man was a great goaltender during the regular season. He had a 9-11 and a 272. Look at last season's numbers. Since he came to New Mexico those numbers improved a lot. Then we get to the postseason, and they just completely fall apart. I mean, this man's never put up good numbers in the postseason, but even still, I mean, he only played five games last postseason. He only played seven this time around. I don't understand. I really don't. Why do the goaltenders flop, and why does the team flop? I thought we were a good team. According to the standings, we're a good team every single year. But then something happens. So I really don't know what it's going to take anymore. The fact that we can't get out of the second round just blows my mind here. We're going to make a couple moves during the off season. I'm not 100% sure what the moves are going to be yet, but we got to make some adjustments to this team. With the 91st overall pick, we're going to be getting a nice trade piece here as we're going to be securing a medium elite potential goaltender. And I can guarantee you for a fact, this man's getting traded. And just a couple picks later with 124th overall, we're going to be securing a medium Elite potential center and you already know medium elite potential forwards they carry a lot of trade value and the medium elite potential players keep on coming in here because just like that we got ourselves another medium elite potential goaltender and it looks like to finish off the draft here we're going to be securing one more elite potential player except this time it's going to be a low elite potential grinder so when it comes to gavin mckenna's contract extension i don't know how it works like this but somehow we're going to be paying him less money than what he's getting paid right now 10.5 for the next eight seasons that's a great deal on top of the Gavin McKenna extension, Helmerson's also going to be getting an extension here, three years at 5.7, but we're not done here. Because Hemming's also going to need an extension, and we're going to give him 8.5 for the next five seasons. We're keeping the top six around. Okay, I have no clue how a guy like this is available in free agency for this cheap. 
25 years old, medium lead potential still. He's an 80 overall. We're going to do 2.3 for the next two seasons. We are making sure this man joins our team. I'm actually giving him 2.5. I'm almost giving him a million more than what he's asking for, but he needs to join this team. I'm willing to do anything to make sure he comes here. All right, boys, we no longer need Rizzi, so we're sending him to Minnesota. I'm not paying that man $3 million to sit on the bench. All right, so since we're heading into the final couple years here, we might as well make some last ditch moves. We're going to be bringing in this guy. He's coming off his rookie season. He's an 82 overall that's getting paid a million dollars for the next two years. We need to bring him onto the team. So I'll give you a medium lead potential player and a medium lead potential goaltender. That's not going to be enough. So we're going to have to add some draft picks. So I really don't care what it takes. Here's the second rounder. I don't care what else we have to throw in this deal. I will throw a first rounder in, but I don't want to throw a first rounder in. Maybe a second and third will work. Yeah, screw it. We're throwing a first rounder in since we can't get it done. There we go. This deal is done and we're bringing in that nice young prospect. I guess he's not necessarily a prospect. He did play last season. So yeah, we got a new defenseman. So similar to the New York Rangers, the guy coming off his rookie contract, he's 20 years old and 82 overall. He's got some X factors. He definitely can't make our defense worse. So let's add him to the team. All right, we're going to ignore the fact that Fitzpatrick lost his X factors. The forward core here still looks pretty strong. We should be able to dominate. We usually do. Defensively, we were in a much better situation than last season. Our second pairing is way better. We actually have a third pairing this season as well. And on top of that, two fantastic goaltenders both of these guys we can rock with 89 overall turkov and then this guy right here timu he's an 88 overall he probably should take the reins over turkov but who knows two of the best goaltenders in the entire league 60 wins minimum all right new mexico no more excuses 58 17 and 7 one of the best offenses in the league best defense in the league we're known for choking like we literally choke every single time. Rubrock, yeah, 93 points this season. That's great. But Kenna 88, I really don't care about the offense here. The goaltending is where it matters. Both of these guys were great. Never mind, the backup kind of sucked. But you know what? That doesn't matter. Turikov's our starter. He's going to hold it down. And he's going to get us a Stanley Cup. All right, so we know who we're going to be losing to in the first round. It looks like it's going to be the Vegas Golden Knights. I'm just expecting it now. All right, disaster time here. It's tied 2-2 in the series. You already know what's going to happen in game five. We're somehow going to lose it. Who would have saw that one coming? We're probably going to win game six, then lose in game seven. I'm literally telling you exactly what's going to happen. We won game six. We're losing game seven, four to two. I'm calling it right now. So here we go. Game seven. We're losing four to two. I'm going to simulate the game here. Oh, we actually won for once. We haven't seen the second round in a handful of years, it seems like. But here we are back in the second round probably shouldn't be here i feel like we should have lost this series but hey i'll take it so we've made it to the second round a handful of times in this video and we've lost every single time so i'm kind of expecting the exact same thing to happen because why would things change oh my god it actually happened we swept the arizona coyotes and we're in the conference finals it took us 13 years to get here 13 years 14 years i don't even remember anymore i think we're in year 14 right now it took us 14 years to get here but we finally made it the conference finals i'm done looking at the playoff bracket you know what we're just going to simulate the next matchup we're probably taking on the edmonton oilers maybe the san jose sharks it really doesn't matter who we take on it's the san jose sharks we're going to simulate this matchup and hopefully make it to the stanley cup final we have never made it this far here we go we're going to simulate things aren't looking good never mind things are looking absolutely fantastic we have a 3-1 series lead we're going to close it out here don't blow a 3-1 series lead whatever you do do not blow a 3-1 series lead here we go stanley cup final against the ottawa senders oh my god we actually might win a stanley cup here we're going to blow it aren't we never mind we're not going to blow it we're up three to two a lot's going on right now all i know is we're off to game seven we're going to lose the stanley cup in game seven we made it all the way here only to lose in game seven i mean ottawa's a fantastic team but by right we should beat them because we are better hold it down for one game new mexico i need one more game out of y'all we have the lead after the first period in the second it looks like the ottawa center is going to be tying it up i'm so scared we're simulating the third period here we actually want to stand the cup it happened it finally happened after all the constant disappointment after the failures year after year the New Mexico Outlaws are Stanley Cup champions 14 years after bringing this team into the league. I can't believe it's finally happened. It doesn't seem real. Every single person on this roster should have their jersey retired in the Hall of Fame. Put all of them up in the rafters. I don't care if you had one point. I don't care if you had 31 points. Every single player here needs their number in the rafters. Even Clark Caswell. He had three points. He might have been minus three, but he held it down when we needed him to. And the goaltending numbers... Turikov, incredible. 16 wins, one shot, a 902 and a 285. Who would have thought? I never thought we would see the day that the New Mexico Outlaws win a Stanley Cup. Honestly, we should take a picture of this. 
because we're probably never going to see it again. Unless we repeat next season, because there is a possibility of that because the entire core is coming back. All right, so these are the two guys we're losing in free agency here, and honestly, I have absolutely no issue with that. When it comes to goaltending, we're not losing anyone. We're going to have the exact same team except for Caswell, but honestly, I can live with that. We'll find somebody else to play on the fourth line, and then we'll go ahead, repeat, and win ourselves another Stanley Cup. Also, y'all remember how I said we're not bringing back Caswell? Well, I changed my mind. Two years at $2.5 million. Let's just run it back with the exact same team. What could go wrong? Also, why would we run it back with the exact same team if we can make some improvements? So here we go. Go, we're picking up an 85 overall right winger they think they're getting a good deal here but we're gonna be unstoppable all right here we go the final season still haven't figured out why fitzpatrick doesn't have an x factor anymore but you know what we're not going to worry about it maybe it's because he doesn't have elite potential but who cares we want a stanley cup we improved the team here we're looking to run it back once again the defense is basically the exact same except for the third pairing but hey this defense was fantastic we even have an 88 overall here on the second pairing i'm expecting big things from this team and to cap it all off of course we have two of the best goaltenders in the league it's actually funny turakov here is the second best goaltender in the league and our backup he's the sixth best goaltender according to overall of course so we have the second best goaltender and the sixth best goaltender 65 wins should be the bare minimum for us but of course we know that's not going to happen and this team's probably going to find a way to choke so here we go in our final season first in the entire league once again 58 19 and 5 not only did we have the best offense in the entire league at 4.32 goals per game but we also had the best defense here at 2.84 we're the best offense the best defense unfortunately though we've been in this position before and we know how it's ended hopefully we have a different result here and actually win another stanley cup because i don't want to go 15 years here and only win one so we can look at the numbers here and of course they're going to be incredible look at how many guys we have on this team scoring over 60 points the depth scoring on this team is incredible and you know what else is incredible the goaltending numbers turakov continues to be the man here 45 wins three shouts a 9 12 and a 262 honestly the backup's kind a wash not gonna lie i get this guy's an 88 overall but look at these numbers bro you gotta be doing better than that but i really don't care what numbers the backup puts up because we're in the postseason here we're looking to complete the repeat and we have the arizona coyotes in the first round this is really the most fitting way for us to end this video huh losing in the first round we won 56 games 58 games i don't even remember we lost in the first round that's the most fitting way for us to go out here the new mexico outlaws one of the greatest teams of all time but could just never win when it mattered most we made it to the conference finals once in 15 seasons made it to the stanley cup final once in 15 seasons we had one stanley cup here in 15 years the fact that we were this good of a team and only won one stanley cup doesn't sit right with me the new mexico outlaws were better than this and they deserved more and with this elimination that's going to be capping off not only the video but the series we've completed all 15 years here and i'm just incredibly disappointed with how things went one stanley cup in 15 seasons that doesn't sit right with me but if you've made it to the end of this series as well as the end of the video comment turakov he was our stanley cup winning goaltender we wouldn't have been able to do it without him and we probably should have picked up this man a bit sooner